So I want to tell you a story. The story starts in 2004 during the World Summer Olympics that are in Athens, Greece. The Olympics had come home and in South Africa is a 12 year old boy who was absolutely glued to the TV set watching these Summer Olympics. He is glued, he is mesmerized, he is, he is hypnotized, and he is, he is captivated, but not just from the Olympics per se, but by one, one particular Olympic swimmer, an, an incredible Olympic swimmer, who had just won his sixth gold medal, the most award-winning Olympic swimmer in Olympic history by far, by name of Michael Phelps. And this 12-year-old boy in South Africa was so glued and so moved, something in him that lined up, so moved by all of this, that he actually made a decision and a declaration and a target and life dream to himself that very day, to which he said, in his own words, that he was going to become the greatest possible swimmer that his body and his life and his person ever could become. Wow. But even more was that he stuck with it, and here's what he did. He made Michael Phelps that day his all-consuming boyhood hero. And he read every possible thing he could read anywhere about Michael Phelps, and he cut them all up and put them in a scrapbook. And then his imagination, which was needing images, he went to any magazine and periodical and any photo and picture of Michael Phelps that he could find anywhere. He cut them out and he plastered them on his wall and he plastered them in his sight and he plastered them in his scrapbook and books. And he looked at them over and over and without knowing by any name of Missile Mind or more what he was doing, he instinctively he instinctively, some part of him knew that he was taking it in to his deeper mind. Wow. But then even more than this, he also video recorded any and all swimming and winnings of Michael Phelps that he could find anywhere that came over the TV and so forth that he could record. And then what he did with these recordings, he took the recordings, and he watched them, and then he watched them again, and then he watched them again, and he watched them over and over again and again and over and over. Programming his deeper mind to release the powers of the deeper mind, all by an instinct knowing that he had to saturate his being and knowing without even knowing the, the, the phrase that he needed to go into full immersion, full immersion and live and be that life of which he wanted and where his dream, where his dream did live and abide. And that is what he did over and over again, day in, day out, week in, month in, year in, year out. Now, fast forward to the 2000, the incredible 2012 World Olympics in London, England. And there, walking on the deck of the pool, competing for a gold medal, was none other than the prior 12-year-old boy known as Chad Leclo competing for the gold medal in the Summer Olympics of 2012 in London, England. More incredible than this, more incredible than this, and especially to him, the swimmer who was walking just in front of him on the deck of the pool 
was none other than, you guessed it, his boyhood hero, all-consuming hero, Michael Phelps. Wow. And Chad LeClo was so overwhelmed by this, all of a sudden it struck him so deep, he was so overwhelmed that he, he just had to. His energy in person just had to express to Michael Phelps how he felt about him and how he was his boyhood hero and his inspiration of everything he did in swimming and all of life. Now, Michael Phelps wasn't just touched a little, but he was so overwhelmed and went to his coach to tell him, and the coach also became so overwhelmed because Michael Phelps had long ago expressed to his coach that his all-consuming dream and his all-consuming goal was not for medals per se, but was for, for the raising up of the sport of swimming and to inspire people to go after their deepest dreams. Double wow. <laughs> I mean, what an incredible story. What an incredible story. So, so now they're going to jump in the pool and the, the master is going to be swimming with the student and the master is going to be competing with the student and the student is going to be competing with the master in the pool. And what happened was, if you've seen, if you've seen the race or if you go back and see, see it, the 100 meter, the Olympic 100 meter swim, Olympic, Olympic swimming race of the 100 meter. If you watch it, you will see that the master and the student, they went like this. The whole, they, were, they were head over head, neck over neck, shoulder over shoulder, stroke over stroke, stroke, all the way to the end. We're finally, we're finally by just a touch, just a touch as they say in swimming. He just, he, he beat him by a touch, literally. It was one quarter of a second, if it was not one tenth of a second, did Michael Phelps touch, boom, boom, just before the student, Chad LaClo. Man. So it was like one last parting lesson to the student. But more than this, more, even more incredible than this was the night before, Chad LeClo had actually beaten his boyhood hero, Michael Phelps, the most gold medal winning swimmer in all of Olympic history. And, and Chad LeClo had actually beaten him for the gold medal in the Olympic 200 meter butterfly. Wow. So, upon the the podium for the medal ceremony when Chad LeClo was getting that gold medal, realizing that there, the silver, there with him on the podium was his, his master, his boyhood hero, and he the student, and the student had equaled the master, and the student had, had, had tied the master, and the student had now even surpassed the master. What an incredible story of, of somebody who, who relayed, knowingly or, or unknowingly, how they tapped this power that, that, that gave them the, the power and the, and the igniting of their, of their fuel, the igniting of their missile to go and keep going and going until they hit their life dream. Boom! 